Your thoughts. <laughs> what? What? Who? Friday in the heart of the Riverbend and the first day of the third month of the year. CJ Nacello, our daily show, Riverbender.com, a jam-packed one. But let's get to this one. So as you guys know, for 17 years since I was growing up here in the Alton area, Riverbender.com has always been innovative. And now we've kind of soft-launched this. Mike's been working so hard upstairs. We now have AI for business tools at your disposal. This is so cool. Before we do news, talk about the show. I'm so excited about this because no matter what, folks, AI is here. It ain't going anywhere. And this can help make your business life so much simpler. You know, think about it. Every day you guys are working your small businesses or maybe even your large ones. and You're paying all this money out of pocket for press releases and all of these things with our tools at riverbender.com, business.riverbender.com. That's business.riverbender.com. Dot com. You can get all of these new innovative AI tools like generating press releases and creating blogs, all these different nuances from AI that we have uh, really just been so proud of, of Mike's uh, coding on this and his prompting. It is going to make your life so much easier. You go to business.riverbender.com. Get your online account going. It's free. Now, there are credits that you have to purchase to utilize the tools, but those are completely inexpensive, and they're perfect for you because you're going day in and day out, and who has time for that 30 minutes to write posts and write articles and press releases and make sure you're getting your name out there? We're taking care of it for you right here at riverbender.com with these new AI tools. You go to business.riverbender.com and start that journey today. But let's get to top of the hour news now. Make sure you sign up for your daily email update and you'll never miss out. You can join myself and over 70,000 people that are in the know each and every day of the work week and on Saturdays with Around the River Bend. We'll take you to Alton first. This is this is continuing coverage. Alton Fire Chief Jesse Jemison hasn't made the decision very often, but he did make the decision that the old Turner Hall building had to immediately come down after the fire was extinguished. There are photos on Riverbender.com that show the demolition taking place around 10.40 p.m. Wednesday night. He said only one other time he has had to make that type of decision when the McDonald's, as we remember on Broadway, burnt to the ground. He said the reason for the move was because he was worried about the safety of everyone in that vicinity. Siler Company came in and performed the demolition around 10.30 p.m. and finished the job before midnight. Out of Edwardsville, property owners will soon get a postcard in the mail from the Madison County Board of Review with their final notice of assessment. Board of Review Chair Phil Taylor said the final notice of assessment for 2023, also known as multiplier cards, will be mailed on Monday, March the 4th. Here's what we know. Taxpayers across the country are going to notice across the county, excuse me, are going to notice their property values Increase, Taylor said. The Board of Review held a public hearing on Thursday announcing the property assessment equalization factor or multipliers for the county's 24 townships. The equalization is the final step in the assessment process. The multiplier is the effort of providing a uniform average of a level of assessments between townships and or counties. The equalization factor is determined by the legal level of assessment divided by the three-year average of the actual level of assessment. Assessments in Madison County are at 30.51% of fair market value based on sales of property in 2020 through 2022. The Illinois Department of Revenue issued a 1.0889 multiplier for Madison County. 
Dan Brannon reporting out of East St. Louis. A Fort Smith, Arkansas man, Christopher Palmer, has pleaded guilty for trafficking about 40 pounds of methamphetamine through the Metro East. A Southern Illinois district judge has sentenced the Arkansas man to 360 months of imprisonment. Christopher Palmer pled guilty to one count of a conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute meth, one count of possession of a firearm and furtherance of a drug trafficking crime, and one count of felon in possession of a firearm on June the 29th, 2023. Palmer was sentenced to 300 months for count one, 60 and a 60-month mandatory consecutive sentence for count two, and a 120-month sentence to run concurrent concurrent to count one. As a repeat criminal offender, the defendant chose to transport drugs in bulk for distribution and unlawfully possesses a firearm knowing the consequences, said U.S. Attorney Rochelle Odd Crow. She continued on this. I appreciate our partnership with the DEA to apprehend offenders guilty of violent and drug-related crimes. According to the court documents, two DEA highway interdiction officers pulled Palmer over. As he was driving a rental car on Illinois State Route 143, the exit ramp off Interstate 70 near Marine in May of 2022, agents asked Palmer to exit the vehicle and he complied. Once outside the vehicle, he tried to re-enter the car and move the gear shift into drive to evade the police. Following Palmer's attempt to flee the traffic stop, officers did detain him and conducted an open-air canine sniff of the vehicle. The canine did indicate the presence of a narcotic odor, thus initiating a probable cause search. In the trunk of Palmer's rental vehicle, officers located a duffel bag stuffed with 40 bags holding approximately one pound each of crystal meth, totaling more than 17 kilograms of actual meth. In the car center council, DEA officers located a Glock 43 semi-automatic pistol. Palmer is unable to legally possess firearms due to prior felony convictions. Under the federal sentencing guidelines, Palmer qualified as a career offender for previous drug trafficking convictions. Career offenders are eligible for longer terms of federal imprisonment. Following imprisonment, Palmer will serve five years of supervised release. The DEA did lead the investigation, and Assistant U.S. Attorney John Trippi prosecuted this case. <clears throat> Also in the news out of Godfrey, the village of Godfrey will hold a ceremony commemorating the groundbreaking of the F.E. Widman Trail. The ceremony will take place on Monday at 9 a.m. at La Vista Park. You still have time to watch the show Monday. Officials will celebrate the kickoff of the first of three phases of construction. The F.E. Widman Trail will be a paved biking walking trail that will ultimately link Glazebrook Park with La Vista Park and will allow users to travel from Stamper Lane to the Sam M. Vatalibian Bike Trail, my apologies on that last name, along the Great River Road connecting the Village of Godfrey's Parks to the extensive trail system within our region. Planning and design has been in the works since 2019 and are possible in part with grant funding from the Metro East Park and Recreation District, the Madison County Transit Trail System, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, and Madison County Park Enhancement Program. We will be on hand and relay that coverage on Monday. One final bit of news from you, and it's always from Sydney Sinks, who's waiting in the wings to come on and talk blog talk. The second phase of Plummer Family Park construction has begun, and here's what we know. Plummer Family Park opened in the year 2020. The second phase of construction will introduce 13 new pickleball courts, including a championship court, six volleyball courts, four baseball fields, and a playground. Edwards will mark the beginning of construction with a groundbreaking ceremony on Leap Day, Thursday, February the 29th. Here's the statement. Leap Day is commonly known as an extra day, a bonus day, if you will, and we are definitely making the most of leaping into action here at Plummer Family Park. Mayor Art Risby said in a statement, he continued, I'm proud and impressed by all of our parks in Edwardsville, but particularly the passionate particularly I'm passionate about Plummer Family Park, excuse me. It's 83 acres of fun, 83 acres of camaraderie, 83 acres of confidence and social skills. 83 acres of athletic grit and determination, and 83 acres of opportunity. That was the mayor's statement. He thanked one more game, Pickleball Club, the South 
Western Illinois Baseball League, Glen Ed Soccer, YMCA, SIUE, and McKendry. Superintendent Dr. Patrick Shelton and the Edwardsville School District. Coach Tim Funkhauser, Corey Job and the Great Rivers and Routes Bureau, and Byron Jones Construction Company. He also thanked the aldermen who have greenlit the park and supported the Edwardsville Enhancement Plan, which prioritizes green space and parks by utilizing a quarter percent sales tax. For more information about the Plummer Family Park, you can visit the official webpage on the City of Edwardsville's website. 912, let's take a brief look at weather. It's 34 degrees and it feels cold out there. Today, we had a little bit of a accumulation of snow early on, rain early this morning, but mostly it'll be cloudy. Tonight, it will be clear. Temperatures will only reach 49 degrees today, drop down to 32 overnight on Saturday. No rain in the forecast, partly sunny skies, a high of 65, a low of 45. <clears throat> On Sunday, a high of almost 80 degrees, 77 is what we're predicting right now for Sunday, a low of 53. Then on Monday, we're back to 75 degrees for the high, 46 for the low. But let's take a look at downtown Alton and see how those gloomy skies are looking. Oh, you can see the sun peeking through there. The Cracker Factory, Mineral Springs Mall, and you got the Alton Amphitheater along with the Clark Bridge shining down in all of its glory. You can see this camera in real time all the time at riverbender.com forward slash weather and for time and temperature throughout the day. 618-465-4545. This time powered by Bounce Back. Rehab, recover, and return home. We'll take a quick break. Sydney Sinks joins us next time to talk a little bit of blog talk right after this on riverbender.com. When I got in the car accident at the ER, they gave me a prescription prescription of hydrocodone and over time it took more medication to mask the pain. I moved over to drug seeking and found heroin and fentanyl. I went to the Centerstone rehab facility and it was the best decision I ever made in my life. I have my own car, I have a job, there's nothing holding me back anymore. A season pro or a weekend warrior gear up with foul commit and elevate your hunting experience from rugged gear for the seasoned hunter to adorable outfits for the little ones we've got your whole family covered literally because the best moments are made in the great outdoors and with foul commit you're not just wearing gear you're wearing the stories of your adventures discover the joy of hunting together visit foulcommit.com and outfit your family for the next generations of memories we are Phillips 66 Wood River Refinery. We make the fuels that take us to work and our children to school. We make materials and energy products that allow us to stay connected to each other. We care about the quality and safety of our products because we care about the communities we share. Our employees live our values of safety, honor, and a commitment to act as good neighbors where we live and operate. We are Phillips 66. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. Welcome back, 916. Blog Talk, rolling with the punch. See, we have an extra line now. Look at that, Mike helping us out again. Very cool. And I was just telling everyone to start the show, the new AI tools for business owners. You know, I, I think it's a great idea, you know, yeah. to really offer them the opportunity to really utilize those tools. And that way they aren't spending a half hour, 45 minutes trying to create a simple, you know, two paragraph article. Life's easy. 
Right, life's easy, and that's what it's all about. Like, let's just make it as easy as possible, as simple as possible for the people around us. That's exactly right. And now, something that I think is incredibly difficult, and I can't walk and chew gum half the time, let alone roller skate. You got to fill me in on this. So, how long have you roller skated? Um, I've how long have I roller skated? I've roller skated twice, so oh, that's about you know so two timer, two timer. So <laughs> two I'm is true. Getting pretty good at it, I'd say. Now, are you ready for the roller leagues? Oh, absolutely. You're ready for roller derby? No problem. Look at me go. Yeah. <laughs> so believe it or not, before I got into media really heavy, I was doing stuff with pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And one of the most fun shows, we had like a th- it had to be a thousand people in this arena, in, I think St. Charles or close That's to it. Fun. It was roller derby and pro wrestling. Okay, so like for the folks that like that are older, they know that was a Sunday morning on Channel 11. Like that was what you watched was roller derby and you had people going off of ramps and fighting each other. Yeah. And then you had the, the wrestling. But are, so you think you could be like a bruiser out there on the roller rink, huh? I mean, I certainly know how to take a punch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I know how to take the bruises because I took them this weekend when you I was did. roller skating. So you, what are you going to do? You got more uh, physical contact than I did because I sat in my house and was very uh, reserved. So take me through the experience. You were at the Alton Amphitheater. I was, yes. Great venue for roller, roller skating. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. A great place just to hang out and, you know, see what's going on. And especially this past weekend. I don't know. It's hard to remember now because it's cold <laughs> and snowy out. But this past weekend, the weather was so nice. And it so was. it was beautiful. Well, and too, like... Like, it was such a bummer because Friday, it was nice out, mm-hmm. and then I had all this stuff to do, and I kept looking out the darn window at work going, come on. Exactly. I mean, it's right there. You can leave. <laughs> it's okay. You know, we'll figure it out. But I just couldn't pull myself to do it. But Saturday was good. Saturday was good. I've warned John upstairs that I'm going to I'm gonna figure out how to unpaint the windows and just open them because we just need something. That, <laughs> You're yeah. right. That's the one thing. Yeah. I Just a little fresh air, exactly, you know. Maybe yeah. I kick a little hole in the bottom of one and just let the air gust <laughs> Whatever come in. it takes just to get some fresh air, please. But no, yeah. So Saturday I went out and uh, went roller skating, which was really quite fun, except for the fact that I fell a couple times. But that's one of the risks you take when that's you true. do this. So you know but it was just a good hobby i'm just trying to get i'm just trying to get into more things more hobbies try new things so it was all yeah. about all about saying yes. well i like it because you there you go yeah. <laughs> keeping the motto going well <laughs> the thing is for me like the hardest thing was when i got out of soccer there was nothing else to do i mean right. i did that for 15 years yeah. and so it's so hard to really find what interests you and it's it's easy to say I just don't want to try that yeah but it's really cool that you're saying yes to these opportunities now were you padded up were you were you helmeted and ready to go no so I don't oh, have no <laughs> no Sydney so, we gotta teach them proper roller skating ethics here do as I say not as I do please please be safe if you're gonna try it be safe but that being said no I do not own knee pads or anything like that. So I just went out and I decided, you know what? And that's the thing too. I wore shorts because I was yeah. like, I, here's what I figured. If I fall down, I will heal up. But my jeans that I like a lot won't heal up. Have so. you ever fallen with jeans and had those threads stuck in your cut? Yeah, that's, that's a the weird. Worst. Yeah, that's a stinger, you know? <laughs> So probably a good call. Yeah, all in all, a good call. So, you know, I bounced back. So I I did fall down, which was unfortunate. But I bounced back, got up, kept going, fell down again, got up again, and then sat down and said, I think I'm good for now. Now, for the folks watching, do you think the amphitheater is a good spot to roller skate? Or do you think there's a lot of terrain there you got to account for? Oh, no. I mean, I think anywhere you're going to roller skate or (laughs) skateboard or outside or anything. I act like I'm an expert here. Yeah, I know. I I don't know. I'm asking you. You got it. I have it. (laughs) Well, anywhere, if you're going to do it outside, you gotta you run the risk of these natural hazards, right? <laughs> run the yeah, risk of true. cracks in the sidewalk or rocks or twigs, which is what took me out. Or taking twig. your one wheel up State Street Hill. <laughs> 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 I can imagine. So yeah, so definitely it's a it's a dangerous sport, I'm but fired. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know what? That's the place to go if you're able to. That's I mean, and it's beautiful. You can see the bridge. You can see the river. It's gorgeous out yeah. there. So it's a great place to hang out. Now, did you do this by yourself? Or you have friends with you? How does that go? Um, I was with a couple of friends, so we just hung out for a little bit and skated around. So and had they a good partook. Time. 
They did partake. Are they in. veteran roller skaters? Was this their first time? This is not their first time. They are better than I am. <laughs> I will say that. I won't say any of us are veteran experts, but they are definitely better than I am. Stayed upright a little bit more than I did. So what are you going to do? So did it start off okay? Like, were you feeling pretty confident then the fall happens? I was feeling great, CJ. I was, <laughs> I was, off, I was like, wow, I'm so, I felt so good about like trying this new thing too. I was like, wow, I'm so unique and interesting. I'm roller skating. The wind's blowing through your it's hair. It's beautiful out. <laughs> and then I fall. And here's the thing. So I'm not old by any means, right? Like, I no. understand. I'm, like, young and I'm in relatively good shape. Like, I'm very lucky as far as that goes. That being said, I can tell I'm getting older because when I fell down, I did not bounce back up again. <laughs> <laughs> you sat there and took I it for a second. I just sat there for a second. There like, huh. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Confidence rattled. Ego <laughs> bruised. Yeah. You're right, though. Yeah. Whenever you get older, that like kind of it yeah. take a little bit longer to get up you just have to make sure everything's still there you exactly. know exactly I, I was kind of like hmm, i kind of want to sit down for a second, but... it, it's debilitated you you it know it is yeah and i'm just saying that didn't used to happen so i can tell i'm aging so what are you gonna do so how many times did you fall if you don't mind me asking i only fell twice so, so. what was the duration in between the first and second fall was the second fall pretty quick after that yeah we got about half a lap in and then, and then hit again and then after that, I was like, I need a little bit of a break. I need to nurse my <laughs> nurse my ego just a little bit. Take a pause. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it ha- it happens. It does happen, and that's the risk you take when you're gonna try something new, right? So that's my that's my big full circle moral of the story is you know you gotta you gotta try new things. You're gonna fall down. You gotta get back up again. But in all honesty and truth, it just it just was fun. Yeah, so. for sure. Well, I think it's really cool because. It, it, to me, you're doing a great job of going to different locations too, yeah. and I think that's what's cool. You know, you aren't at Glazebrook Park every, you know, for every one of your blogs. Yeah. And you know, I was just we're going to talk to Dan Herkert, the amphitheater commissioner, here in about uh, I don't know, 50 minutes or that's so. Awesome. And uh, what we were talking about is all these different diversity, uh, just this diversity of events, because you're going from power boating mm-hmm. to fishing tournaments to all of these things, and there's so many uses. And just for the you know leisurely activities like ro- well, I wouldn't call roller skating leisure <laughs> because you got to put some effort in, but right. like going for walks and all these things, the amphitheater is perfect for that. Oh, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a great place just to spend some time, and and not even mentioning the cool events that they have, yeah. right? Which is amazing and fun to see and see what. Going Stay on. tuned. We'll have yeah. that lineup coming out for you in a couple, about a month or so. We, we're we going to hint at that today, too. It's exciting. <laughs> That'll be fun. But with that being said, so did you already have roller skates? I'm, I'm curious how this goes because yeah. I... I would feel very uncomfortable for me personally because I'm a cheapo. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just honest about it. If it's not a slot machine, don't bother. You know, <laughs> there's got to be some Fair type enough, of yeah. return. In it. But I, so I'm sitting here going, would I buy roller skates if I've never done it before? Here's the thing. So something that you need to know about me is I get excited. So I, <laughs> so I, I did. True. I got excited and I was like, you know what? This is my new thing. I'm going to become a roller skater. Did you really? You I'm going to be. <laughs> Um, so I bought the roller skates and, and did it as a little gift for myself, like a little a little splurge, right? Yeah. But uh, definitely now it's time to prove it, time to put my money where my mouth is. So, uh, you know, second time, kind of rough. You know what? We're coming back for a third Are time. Are you doing it? Of course, we're coming okay. back. It's going to be good. Now so. do your friends like it? They like it enough. They, they <laughs> they'll they'll humor me at least a little bit. So <laughs> they like it enough just to go. Yeah, exactly. Well, and so, you yeah. have a good group of friends. I mean, it really yeah. see because that's hard anymore. It's not like yeah. it used to be. Like you know, I hear some of the stories of my dad and my mom, and they're a group that is still hanging out today. Right. And, it just seems like friendships at our age really are hard to find right now. No, that's very it, real. You know, I'm not being like kind of getting on my soapbox and getting depressed, but I mean, it's yeah. really hard to find that really good group of friends where you can do anything with them. You that's know? very real. No, it's definitely, and I think that, I think, I mean, now well, now I'm getting philosophical, but I feel like maybe yeah. that's just a function of being, uh, you know, in your 20s and you're out of school and you're not like in a situation where you're around these people all the time. Right. So it's very, it's very hard to uh, maintain those friendships. And so it's a very intense decision to come together and to do things with people and to keep going so now yeah. I have a question for you and yeah. this is more for me and sorry I <laughs> CJ's therapy session for a couple minutes my biggest problem is, mm-hmm. and I'm honest about it, I get really, because throughout the week, you yeah. and I know how hard we work to get things done here right. and we're always going. So by Saturday, I just am like done. 
Absolutely. You know, and I'm sure I know you are too because you're going and doing all these things and covering a lot of stories. I think you wrote like what 36 stories in two days. It was like it was. insane. <laughs> it was just an. I mean, two minutes. It was a lot. Yeah. So how do you mentally prepare for that? Because I don't want to say it's ever a chore to hang out with your loved ones or friends. It's never. But when you're kind of tired and you're worn out from because I kind of need this, what do yeah. you tell yourself to get up in the morning on a Saturday and do it? No, that's very real too because it just there comes a point and uh, something about by the end of the week, like it's Friday today right? right i am ready to go I thought home it was friday two days ago i know right <laughs> i'm ready to go home and sleep tonight that's my plan that's my big friday night plan as i'm gonna go home and sleep but um so same no it's very much by the end of the week you're just tired you're ready to go home and and what i try to keep in mind is like you regret the things you don't do more than anything yeah. so i could you know i could stay in and sleep in and and trust me i do my share of that i just don't write about it but <laughs> I, I do my share of that but no and i could do that every Every, every day, but I try to instead be like, you know, at the end of the day, this is going to be more um, fulfilling for me and more renewing is to be able to get out and spend time with yeah. people and do stuff like that. Well, because I, that's seriously something I'm yeah. going through right now is no. because, you know, with the dog in the house, you know, life changes happen, but Absolutely. I, I, it's like, you know, I, I feel kind of like I, I, well, I am being a bad friend. I'm just going to be honest. I, it's because, you know, it's not like I don't want to see or I don't right. want to go hang out and have fun, but you know, number one, money's tight right now. It's Num- very true. <laughs> <laughs> number two, it's just it's hard to it's just hard for me to mentally go. All right, we got another two hours. Yes, no, you that's very saying? true. That's very real. So no, it definitely is something that look like that. I look at us go. Yeah, we're being so, we're being so vulnerable. <laughs> look at that. No, but we're it's very. Um, it's very intentional, I guess, to spend time with friends and to try to do that. And, you know, there's no shame in also, though, taking that break and taking right. that day where you're like, you know what? I love you guys, but I just need a day to myself. And so I think that, like, kind of like that balance and uh, teaching that balance to other people, too, and, and understanding that you're allowed to take time for yourself and have that break. And in addition, you're also allowed to spend time with friends and to get out there and do things that are fun for you. And both of those things can be renewing at the same time. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. And now as we're uh, getting back, we've already been talking for 20 minutes. Almost. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's 930. Uh, with that being said, what is your, we do we know what the next blog's about? We're going to figure it out? We're going to figure it out. We figure it out every week. So we're going to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing this weekend? That's kind of how my gauge is. You know, that's what, fair. Yeah. What that's... are What are your plans? Anything planned? Nothing wild planned. I will say something that might be in there. I, well, I hit a deer yesterday. No way! <laughs> no way! Okay, you cannot not tell me that. Bury the lead. No yeah. way. So t- now, sorry, we got to take a couple more minutes here. This is something to talk <laughs> yeah. about. I so before you go into your story, that same friend because I don't. I whenever I sold the business or yeah. partnered it off, I close my circle off completely because I was kind of getting taken advantage of just the thing. And so I have one, my really one good friend, two good friends, but one of them hit a two deer in two days. Oh my goodness. Uh, And I think it was in the same location. I'll have to text him here in a second. (laughs) But I will never forget getting in his car and going, what the hell? Why is all this hair in the back seat? And he goes, oh, that's where the deer landed. And I know what the... And then the next day, even more, the car's gone, you know? So did you, did you terminate the deer? I don't think so. I think the deer just had a headache. But here's the thing: the deer hit me. If we're being honest, oh, okay, take that to court. Take that to court. <laughs> so that's a little teaser. I think that might be where we're heading for next week, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready for that one. Any stories you got coming out today? Uh, we got a few things. Always good things coming up. I'm going to a ribbon cutting later today, so that's exciting for Tycon Builders. So oh, that'll be cool. Fun. Yeah, their location yeah, that exactly. was burnt last year. Yeah, really cool. So that's cool. exciting. So all, all these good things. And then we got, of course, the River Bend Wellness Festival coming up tomorrow. So that's right. That's exciting, too. Stella and Beth, they're ready that'll to go. Fun. With that being said, you can see Sydney, I'm sure, out at the Wellness Festival. Yep. And you can see her right here on Riverbender.com. And I know that if you're like me and you like kind of this type of stuff, I'm excited to see what happened to this deer. Yeah. Well, who? Is there going to be an illustration on where the tongue was sticking? You know? That's terrible. <laughs> 930. Oh, before, I got to do a yeah. little bit of business. Before we take a, a quick break, I do want to fill you in on Centerstone. You know, we started these new segments, and really, Sydney's the one who gave me the idea for them because you wanted to do this resource guide. And I thought, well, how can I add to that or how can I be a part of it? And we talked, well, I talked with Centerstone and they said, yes, let's do this. Let's talk about substance use disorder treatments. And there'll be another article coming out from our conversation with, get over here, Hannah Jones to uh, about tomorrow or sometime in the next couple of days. But 
recovery can or addiction can happen to anyone it really can and if you're looking for a fresh start on the road to recovery there's only one place to go and that place is centerstone uh you know city centerstone is really a national leader in mental health and substance use disorder treatment and what i think is really cool is it's for people of all ages we were talking to hannah and she said that she's encountered all walks of life as young as 22 as old as 65 that are going through the ringer Mm -hmm. and you know what I think is really great is that the dedicated clinicians at Centerstone use evidence-based practices in their treatment programs, so they aren't getting the same recycled mm-hmm. kind of methods that might work, they might not. It's tailor-made for you. Listen, addiction can happen to anyone, but so can recovery. It's possible, and there's so many resources, and you can find out all of those resources at recoverwithus.org. That's recoverwithus.org. Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. I just got a new air conditioner. Top of the line. I bet mine's better. It's so efficient and quiet. I hardly know it's running. I've got you both Trump. I've got a Linux. So do I. Barrett Heating and Cooling carries Linux products to meet any budget. Don't gamble with your energy dollars. Call Barrett Heating and Cooling and start saving today. Lennox. Innovation never felt so good. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. DJ Mikey. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. Life's better when you're under our roof. That's because our expert agents will make you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. 
Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ. Perhaps I may become a highwayman again. Welcome back to our daily show. 9.36 is the time on this Friday morning. And I just wanted to come back really quickly. We're going to take a brief pause because our conversations with Bryce Griffin, the state to a uh, class two, a state champion wrestler from CM. That's a great conversation coming your way in two minutes. So hang tight, but I'm going to keep driving this home. This is developing and it has been developing for quite some time. Riverbender.com is innovating yet again for 17 years, 18 years before I was even probably three feet tall, Riverbender.com has been the leading force of technology in this area. There's no doubt about it, no question about it. And you see all these people that try to use AI, and listen, I've seen your Facebook post. It's so obvious. It's what you put in is what you get out. And what we've done here at Riverbender.com for all of you small business owners out there is that we, by utilizing credits, just like you would in any other uh, open AI software, you can now have the opportunity to have press releases, all this important information generated at a touch of a button. Plus, the best part is you can send it out to media relations right then and there. All you do is go to business.riverbender.com. That's business.riverbender.com. Mike has put so much work into this, and it's ready for you to use. And I'm telling you, once you start using it, you won't stop because it's not like what you're seeing now. This is real prompts. These are innovative prompts, and they're prompts to help you help yourself. You know, I'm really excited about what Mike's doing. I'm excited for this next chapter. AI isn't going anywhere, and when it's used in this fashion— this is what it's meant for. It's meant to help you help yourself by saving 30 minutes to an hour and a half of your time, plus the expense of having a PR firm. All of these things, all of these things at your disposal, business.riverbender.com. That's business.riverbender.com. We will take a brief break, and we'll come back with our conversations with Bryce Griffin and Dan Herkert right after this on our daily show. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. Do you need to declutter your space? Time to call me, the queen of junk. Since 1993, we have grown to be the leader in residential, commercial, and property management junk removal. At Sparks Junk Removal, we are eco-friendly. We recycle, donate, or repurpose items back into our community. Trash is our last resort to the landfill. Plus, with our all-inclusive service, our crews handle everything from labor to lifting and landfill fees. Give us a call or visit our website, sparksjunkremoval.net, to reclaim your space today. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. Welcome back to Our Daily Show on this Friday morning. You know, Bryce, before I get into this, I am a professional wrestler. Okay, not not a real one like what you do, but like right. the steel chairs and stuff. Yeah. And I've always been so uh, just in, in, infatuated with the work that goes into to, to wrestling itself in the real sport. And to be a Class 2A state champion for CM's got to be such a cool feeling, man. How do you feel? Um, it's awesome. You know, it's been about a week at this point, so it's it's dialed dialed down a little bit. But it's, it's definitely awesome knowing, like, I didn't just, you know, like— 
I put all that work in and got what I wanted. Info, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I got to ask, did you were able to get any sleep after that night, after that tournament win? Um, it was tough. I mean, I was exhausted, but I mean, I was still like awake. I don't know how to explain it. Right. Like my body was like shutting down, but I was like, I was still pretty, pretty excited. Pretty yeah. wired, huh? Yeah. And what I think is cool, before we talk about your season, man, is just the tournament itself. Because we were talking off the air here uh, just for a couple of minutes about the Parade of Champions and really the, the sights and sounds of that mm -hmm. state tournament. If you could fill me in on what that experience is like being an active wrestler and going through that really cool right. ceremony. Yeah, I mean, it's it's super cool. Illinois does a really good job with their state tournament. It's, like, it's really, really cool. But, um, yeah, they make it hard to not be, like like nervous and stuff right. you know because they they kind of amplify how, like the how big i mean it is a big deal but like mm -hmm. you know when you're trying to make a match not as big of a deal so you can perform it's definitely tough when they like shut the lights off and walk everyone around and there's a spotlight on you and you're going and shaking your opponent's hand and stuff it's that's that's something i'd be the guy that trips over myself walking around <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well yeah. And before we go back to the state tournament take me through the preparations for the season because no one realizes i don't think how hard it is to really prepare yourself for the the wrestling season right yeah i mean it's it was tough i mean this this summer i mean i never really stopped training right. but this past summer i kind of had to because i uh i hurt my knee so i did have about a six week or so break and then i had to ease back into things but i mean yeah just day in day out training doing whatever i could once the season started i started doing um like conditioning at the gym like running and biking and stuff like that so i mean just a lot of a lot of you know rigorous hard just just working you know now are you a gallon of water jug guy uh, i drink a lot of fluids that, i yeah. was gonna yeah. ask you because yeah. when i was a couple of the kids played soccer with me that mm -hmm. were on the wrestling team and i'm yeah. going man how do you even drink all, yeah. all that water yeah. how important is staying hydrated in this seriously asking you is prep work it's it's huge i mean like especially for like weight cutting yeah. it's super super important to be hydrated so that you can you know practice and perform well you know it's it's like everything really and then the conditioning side of it because you know i i think we all you know see the brock lesners of the world you know whenever they're at minnesota with uh, right. uh shelton benjamin and how mm -hmm. cool that team was but they don't realize how actually fit those guys are. Yeah. And whenever you're conditioning and getting your body ready, what does it for you? Is it the running on the treadmill? Is it stairs? What's um, your conditioning of choice? Definitely like this this bike that they have up at our uh, gym in Leisure World. I I've always called it like an assault bike, but mm -hmm. it's got like a fan. It's like basically resistance. Like it's like a lot of. I would do six minutes with thirty seconds like a hundred percent, just going as hard as I can. And then 30 seconds, just like barely pedaling in it. And then I'd just do that for six minutes because a match is six minutes long. So, Makes and sense. yeah, so it, that is probably the thing that got me. I wouldn't say it's my favorite because it is not fun, <laughs> but uh, it, it helps a lot. And I'm sure with the with doing that and the, the up and down and the, the highs and lows of that, that exercise itself is just mm -hmm. like a match where you got to work mm -hmm. smarter, not harder in, in a lot of these. Yeah. It's definitely, it's def, that's what I was going for. I mean, at the beginning of the season, I was just running and then I wrestled and then I wasn't super happy with my conditioning. So I started incorporating that bike into there. And from there on out, I felt like I was in pretty good shape for my matches. Right on. And now take me through the season. You're, you're coming off, like you said, you, you hurt your knee a little bit. You had to take some time off. Now yeah. we're getting prepped up, ready to go. Season starts. Did it start off pretty strong for you? It was, it was good. I mean, a, a lot of local competition isn't like... It's not super competitive uh -huh. for me, but I mean, it was it, it was good. You know, there's what didn't get tested a whole lot until about like mid December. We go to a tournament in Delaware, which is a it's a really tough one, probably one of the toughest tournaments in the country. Like the state of Delaware. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not being funny because yeah. in Illinois, there's like 45 Nashvilles. There's an right. Egypt somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the state of Delaware, there's a tournament called Beast of the East, and um, we've went to that the past two years. And last year I went up there, and I think I took maybe fifth or sixth or something like that. So I wanted to go back, and this year I was seated second, and I I wanted to do well. I'd been doing my conditioning, and I was up at 165 at that point in time. But mm -hmm. um, And, yeah, I just... 
I don't know. That was like probably the first hiccup in the row. That were that, those were my two losses. Were both at that tournament. I lost to a couple of nationally ranked kids, and they're, you know, it was tough. Both one point matches, and I mean, you know, that that was a big thing for me because I was at that point in time. I was on the kind of on the on the brink of wanting to go 57 or 65, and that kind of pushed me over. I was like, you know what, I can make 157. Those kids were big, and I I want to go through this season and dominate everyone. So I made 157 from there on out and good call yeah, yeah that was kind of good call the thought process yeah <laughs> hey do you have a minute to stick around let's take a quick pause let me pay a quick bill this conversation will continue right after this on your friday morning on riverbender.com welcome to evergreen place a community that embodies joyful living independence and financial freedom for seniors if you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment we have you covered located on the alt memorial campus to know us is to love us experience the difference at evergreen place Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. Do you need to declutter your space? Time to call me, the queen of junk. Since 1993, we have grown to be the leader in residential, commercial, and property management junk removal. At Sparks Junk Removal, we are eco-friendly. We recycle, donate, or repurpose items back into our community. Trash is our last resort to the landfill. Plus, with our all-inclusive service, our crews handle everything from labor to lifting and landfill fees. Give us a call or visit our website, sparksjunkremoval.net, to reclaim your space today. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. Welcome back to our Friday morning on Riverbender.com. CJ Nacello back in the studio with Bryce Griffin, the Class A, Class A, the Class 2A state champion for the CM Eagles. Before we talk about the state tournament, you know, it's always good to have breaks because you get to talk about things, talk them over. Mm -hmm. And I got to ask you a little bit more about your academic ability, too, because, you know, we started something called Student Spotlight for the folks at home that kind of follow along with us. And we highlight the students that do really cool in the classroom, do Mm -hmm. great things with community service. How important is it for your for you on the academic side, along with the athletic side, to really have both of them on the same page in terms of success? Right. Uh, I mean, it's super important. I've kind of come to find that out, but um, it wasn't always super important for me, as like as is all, most kids. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, school sucks. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. Well, I used to do this thing, and this is a true story. I when the uh, progress report would come out at Alton High, I mm-hmm. knew, and I. Two weeks beforehand, I, or actually the week before the a report was due, the grades were submitted, I'd go mm-hmm. talk to a teacher, you know, hey, what is missing that I could turn in and let's bump this sucker right. up and call it a, a winning progress report? And I'd do a little bit of negotiation. That didn't get right. me very far, Bryce. <laughs> yeah. I think he made the better call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now, David, that's a huge college. And, and what are you looking into to do? Um, I'm wanting to go to law school, so I mean the major's kind of up in the air still, but that's kind of the end goal after my four years there. What type of law interests you? Honestly, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I've done, I've job shadowed um, a guy who runs a law firm, and you know it was, but yeah, I'm still kind of. 
figuring it out. You the, know? the reason being is whenever I was uh, 13, I would mm. I was a huge trial watcher, loved mm. watching trials, and Jody Arias' trial was going on, and I watched a guy named Juan Martinez who looked like Joe Pesci and my cousin Vinny, <laughs> and I swear this guy was just lighting people up, and I said, I'm going to be him. Mm -hmm. Then I realized all the work that went into it, maybe it's time to reflect back a little <laughs> yeah. bit. So it's curious just to see yeah. where you're going in life. And, mm -hmm. you know, now getting back to the state tournament, you know, what does wrestling teach you, uh, you know, just in terms of your personality, in terms of just that mentality to achieve outside of the mat, too? Um, I mean, I think it teaches a lot. I think just when you really commit to a sport like wrestling, it makes a lot of other things seem easier, you know, just because of how how tough it is. There's yeah. so many different moving parts that you gotta you gotta make sure they line up together. And it's, um, but I mean, yeah, it, it, I think it teaches you a lot of, you know, just grit, you know, you got some things, you know, they suck, but you just got to get them done. You know? Grit your teeth and walk through it, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> really cool. And now let's talk the road to the state title here. Mm -hmm. How does this start? So you, you got through regionals pretty, pretty, do you think pretty easily? Yeah, I mean, I... I wrestled like three minutes total. I don't know. I pinned my <laughs> three pins. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. So you get that done, and then what's the next step? Uh, the sectionals. We went up to Muhammad Seymour, which is was actually like a further drive than the state tournament was, which is really weird. it's weird. But yeah, I was there too, and I had uh, I had three pins there too. So that was it was good i had a little some tougher matches but i was able to you know stick them all so what was your mentality <laughs> i like it what was your <laughs> what was your mentality though going up because you know you had a dominating season two losses and two nationally ranked opponents right. but you know you're feeling confident was your thought you know we're getting to state again yeah definitely okay i, I think the goal was i mean i you know it's all one match at a time i don't want to look too far into the future especially when you know you, you got a you got a kid in front of you that wants to beat you. you right. Know what I mean, so, um, but yeah, I think the goal was just to go out there and wrestle and you know and dominate. I I just kind of wanted to set myself apart a little bit. I knew if I just got out there and uh, did what I knew what I knew I. Could, what I knew I could yeah. do, I would just kind of fall into line. Well, I'm curious about it because, you know, wrestling's one of those sports where your failures are your failures. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a teammate that didn't pass you the ball or he wasn't right. open. You know, it reflects on to you. Mm -hmm. And with that, how hard is it whenever you know that, hey, I, I botched that? Does it get, is it, do you get used to that feeling of here's what I could do better eventually? Or is it still tough? Um, Definitely, yeah. I mean, you, I get, I feel like I almost... At one point in my career, I got like too used to it, you know, too yeah. too okay with, you know, like, oh, okay, I didn't wrestle that great, but I still won. And I think that's, it's important to focus on like your performance rather than the outcome, you know, like there's, I won state, but like there's still some things I maybe wish I could have done better. And that's, I think that's important to to know really you know. cool yeah, yeah. And, and now as we get to state you go through sectionals you, you stick them we get to state <laughs> and uh how how does the state tournament break down how many matches do you have uh so you have you have four if if assuming you like right. win all of them yeah you have four and it was it was kind of cool because um with the way that uh the other sectionals worked like the two and three ranked guy like all the guys ranked below me like had hit so i was going to be able to get like number 10 in the state and then the number two in the state and then the number four in the state and then number three so like i'd get like i'd hit all of the tough kids and yeah i, I kind of liked that you know I, I i was ready to take it to them you know was there any part uh in, in the journey in those four matches that you thought uh oh this is going to be a little bit of a, a an uphill battle or did you feel pretty confident all the way through um i was definitely confident but um i think the like, confidence kind of comes from knowing that stuff could happen you yeah know i mean like i not being so confident that i'm like oh i don't need to worry about this match like i need to worry about every single kid because i mean he's a, a human being too you know right. i mean he's a wrestler he's been doing this the past couple months you know i gotta lock in be focused and get it done 100 you know? percent. and now 
Parade of Champions. We circle back. See how I did that? You know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of figured this out on the fly. Here. Yeah. As we get back to the the Parade of Champions, last year your grandfather walked with you. We talked mm-hmm. about that. Who and your coach walked with you this time? Mm-hmm. Is it just one of those things to kind of spread out the love a little bit, or what goes into that decision? Because that's a that's a really cool honor to, to bestow upon somebody. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, last my grandpa is like one of my best friends. Yeah. You know, I talk to him all the time, and so I think that's that was kind of the thought process process behind that he's super supportive of my wrestling so i just you know bring him along with me i i think he liked it so yeah that was that was cool and then i mean this year's kind of i don't know i felt like i didn't make it to the state finals as many times as i could have i wanted to spread it out and my coach is also of course a huge part of my wrestling so i brought him this time yeah (laughs) i mean really cool yeah well now we're getting down to the final seconds of the victory match here Mm -hmm. Starting off that that state the championship, mm-hmm. did you feel pretty good throughout it, or was there was this a pretty good battle? Um, I definitely felt good. I uh, I I felt like I dominated, even though the score wasn't quite as stretched out as I would have liked for it to have been. But when I took him down real early. I was looking up at coach, and I was like, "Can I can I cut him? I want to let him up and take him down again." And he just told me to ride him, so I did. You know, held him down. I think I rode him for a at least half of the match I mean, wow. it was it was a good dominating victory even though the score was only five to one i felt pretty in control the whole time yeah mm-hmm. and now take me through because last year where did you end up you were second last year yeah so that's a pretty good kind of you know comeback whistle right there is right. whenever you're going hey I play second now. I'm winning the whole darn thing. Mm-hmm. What's that moment where you look up? You get? Did you get the results? Is that kind of how this happened? You saw the results and were able to celebrate then, or did you know after that was over that hey, this is mine and I'm I'm the state champ? Oh yeah, no, I I I knew I was um, <laughs> really cool. Yeah, yeah, I was I was excited. Last year I had like the number one kid in the country. He was at the weight below me and he bumped up and I didn't realize he was bumping up till it was too late. So kind of felt a little. Yeah. It was tough. You know, yeah. he, he was really good, and I couldn't do anything about it. So, I mean, yeah. So take me through the moment you find out that you are the state champion officially. What's the first thought? Um, I was just super, I think, relieved in a way. You yeah. Know? I think a lot of people, and of course myself, I kind of expected it of myself, you know, to win the state title. So I think it was a lot of, a lot of pressure off, but also a lot of, like, you know, I was just really proud of, myself the work i put in and the people around me super grateful for all the work and time and money and everything right. that goes in with, from the people around well that was going to be my actually one of my final questions for you because mm-hmm. you know i traveled the the country playing soccer for scott gallagher and i mm-hmm. know the commitment of you know you're working six four in the morning you're getting up going to work by six you're getting home by two to take kids to practice and you're running around it's got to feel pretty good to say, you know what, we did this as, you know, whether it's a family, a team, and really celebrating mm-hmm. together that moment. Right. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely awesome. You know, I, I came off the mat. I had a couple interviews similar to this yeah. one. And um, then I went up to the stands and just, like, I was just, like, bombarded with people who came to watch and, like, my family and just uh, all the – it really kind of – brought it all together like all the different all the people that have made a difference it was cool really cool well now you're a senior the state titles belongs to you and now we're heading to davidson are you wrestling over there yeah definitely really cool and have you gotten a chance to kind of meet some of the guys that you'll be uh you'll be working with yeah i've i've visited already um it was like this past spring i went on a visit and it was it was awesome the campus is beautiful i really really like the coaches i like the kids they were super super welcoming to me and it was it was awesome really cool well bryce man congratulations on being a state champion and all i gotta ask is that once you go to david city you become a lawyer you come back so that way i know who to call if something ever hits the fan okay of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> with that being said we'll take a quick pause here on our friday morning and our daily show will continue right after this in the heart of the 618 is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your 
journey with Lisa Webb today. I just got a new air conditioner. Top of the line. I bet mine's better. It's so efficient and quiet. I hardly know it's running. I've got you both trumped. I've got a Linux. So do I. Barrett Heating and Cooling carries Linux products to meet any budget. Don't gamble with your energy dollars. Call Barrett Heating and Cooling and start saving today. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alt Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. DJ Mikey. This is where I am today. Let me show you where I started. Life's better when you're under our roof. Will make you feel totally protected with the right auto and home coverage at the right price. Also, you can enjoy the dreams you've worked so hard to achieve. American Family Insurance. Since 1993, Sparks Junk Removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients. That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. Welcome back to our new show, here's CJ. Welcome back to our daily show in the 10 o'clock hour. We don't need news because we have news. The commission chair of the Alton Amphitheater Commission, Dan Herker, in studio yet again as the summer is... Getting ready to shape up. How's everything looking, Dan? It's slowly coming together like all years. It all comes down to money. We've been talking with sponsors and meeting with them. Uh, Got to give the mayor a shout out for all the help he's been giving us in, in talking with sponsors. We're putting a budget together. A few things are already in place like the, the anchor events, and we're, we're looking at talent and what's available and hopefully making, making some offers here in the very near future. Well, you know, I brought you on for an update on the amphitheater because we're getting to that time, but I got to ask you, the elephant really in the room, Room was watching the city council meeting during your uh, appointment hearing to be the commission, you know, chair again, your appointment. There was an alderman, Ray Strabel, made some issues and made some uh, questions about this notion or rumor that the Alton Dispensary would be a sponsor of the amphitheater. 
what are I your honestly have no idea how that rumor got started. Uh, and I honestly didn't know about that question until even after the council meeting uh, when another alderman called me and made me aware of it. Uh, the Just to be clear, if there's anything out there, uh, the dispensary expressed interest in being a sponsor, not necessarily any level or anything. They came to our, our sponsor meeting. They took the information, and that was the extent of it. It was I never even spoke to anybody from the dispensary, so I really didn't understand what the alderman's question was. And, and if he'd have made a five-minute call, I could have answered it for him because two other members of the council called. But as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing there, and it's water under the bridge, and I've moved on from it. So uh, that's what my point was. You didn't have any notification before this was brought up at city council that, hey, there's some concerns or there's a rumor going around. Here's my concerns on this. That phone call never happened. Not other than two other members of the council did call me prior to that meeting and asked me about it. And exactly what I told you, there was there was nothing to it. Are you surprised by And I'm not to beat a dead horse here because it's pretty much dead. You know, the the rumor is pretty much dead. But you know, is there any uh, thought that you have to why, you know, the alderman voted no on you because of the dispensary rumor? I, I mean, I, I don't want to put you in a tough spot, but I don't see a dispensary sponsorship as a bad thing. Well, I don't know, and I'm not going to comment on a hypothetical because, as I said, I haven't talked directly to anyone from the dispensary, and they've never come with any kind of proposal at any level, be it a high level or a low level, so there's really nothing to talk about. And I'm, I'm not going to get into what somebody's motives are for asking a question or how they vote. For me, it's all water under the bridge, but it easily, I could have been at the council meeting had someone asked me to be, or a five minute phone call would have settled that question. A hundred percent. And now, you know, moving on because you were reappointed and now you are the commission chair yet again, this summer shaping up, there's a lot of things being floated, a lot of uh, different uh, stories that I've been, you know, not told, but just kind of just suggestions and F1 powerboat race. I don't know where that stands, but this is an exciting summer on the riverfront. Well, that, that'll be a new event on the riverfront and, and, Big props to the Rivers and Routes for going out and getting that event and mm -hmm. working with the city. Uh, we don't know a lot of details yet. It's all still coming together. It's going to be June 21st through the 23rd. I expect it from everything that I've seen uh, to be a very large event. We don't know exactly the full role that the commission is going to play in it. We're having a special meeting uh, next week to try to get all the people together so we can figure out what our role is and budget accordingly. Uh, but we're excited just to be a part of it, and we hope it turns into an annual event that brings a lot of people to downtown Alton. 100%. And on top of that, too, to get it started, March 2nd, Twisted Cat Outdoors is going to be back on the riverfront. This is something I saw coming up down the pipeline. And now uh, to have them back, especially ahead of Expo and whatever comes with that, that's got to be exciting for the commission, too. Well, th this is... Their, this is their own event. We don't have any role in it. They're just going to utilize the venue. They seem to like the venue. They they do the, the Alton Catfish class during the expo. We're thrilled that they're they're going to use our venue. It's just another event down there. Uh, and they've always been great to work with. So hopefully this weekend they'll have a successful event. It looks like the weather is going to be great. Oh, my goodness. 77 degrees on a, on a Sunday. But Saturday is going to be even nicer. 70 degrees mm -hmm. and just mild. Well, and as we were talking a little bit before we go into the normal run of events and how things are kind of looking for the summer, you mentioned sponsorships. Right now, sponsorships are currently open for anybody in, you know, the listening area. If you're in St. Charles, I know there's a lot of folks that listen out there. There's always that opportunity to be involved with the amphitheater, correct? Absolutely. We've got levels ranging from the naming rights are still uh, hanging out there. There's hopefully going to be some movement on that. There's been some interest. I don't want to get ahead of the ball okay. game until anything. There's any details. I don't know that anything is going to materialize. Uh, but there's there's a, a multitude of sponsorship levels. Uh, if anybody's interested, they can call Lindsay Younger, the deputy director of Park and Rec. She can get them a packet. She's got all the information. Uh, and, and as I said, the mayor's been helpful in reaching out to current and potential sponsors so hopefully we're going to be able to put together a pretty good sized budget this year it seems like uh you guys and the mayor do have a pretty good working relationship when it comes to these type of events and sponsorships just from an outsider looking in he's he's been extremely helpful with anything we ask uh for for uh support on and i i can't say enough about how much he's helped with uh the cultivating of the sponsorships and on top of that, too, you know, sponsorships just to not go on a soapbox. I mean, folks always ask every year, you know, 
I, you know, I like this lineup, but why don't we have X, Y, and Z? Have we thought about this? The answer is yes, it was thought about, but it comes down to that bottom line. And, you know, if you could, in your position, you know a hell of a lot more than I do. How important is that sponsorship dollar to really drive the amphitheater forward? Well, the the, the overall vast majority of everything we do is based on sponsor dollars uh, up until 20 through the 2019 season, it was all sponsor mm-hmm. dollars. Following the success we'd had up to then prior to COVID, uh, the city council decided to give us a very small percentage of, of uh, tourism dollars each each year uh, that comes out to somewhere around $100,000 off the top of my head. Uh, but if you if you want to have a, a large season, you're, you're talking four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000. So you have to go out and raise that money because obviously the city has its needs. They can't afford it out of the general fund to be dumping money into, into the amphitheater. I mean, just look at all the things that the city needs to work on. Well, and on, on top of that too, it's your partners within the season that I think lead to the success of it. You know, I, it's very, uh, you know, common that people know that I do a lot of digging and I try to find something. Aventive has one of the best reputations around when it comes to their industry. And to have, you know, the likes of Sam Foxman, who's done, you know, pretty much every show you could think of. How important is that partnership with such a strong uh, production uh, production company like Aventive? Well, it's, it's a huge benefit to us because we're a volunteer commission. We all have day jobs uh, other than our, uh, our longtime member, Dale Blatchford, who's retired, but uh, he, he's busy as all of us are. And having, when you're retired, have, you work for free. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tend to get busier, it seems like. Uh, but have an event of and the expertise they bring to the table where they can we can tell them what we want and they can go do it. And they do it efficiently and effectively for us. And I think anybody that's attended any of our events sees how well organized they are. Well, and then talking to DC Glenn yesterday, one half of the tag team, uh, uh, tag team, you know, he was talking. He said it was a wonderful night, wonderful crowd. They treated you, you guys treated him right. He had nothing but good things to say about it. And it seems like every artist that comes through, I haven't heard a bad experience yet. We we have been lucky. Every every major artist, national artist that's come through Alton has has spoken very highly of of everything we do at the amphitheater, the venue, the the organization that goes into events. Uh, and and that goes a long way because if you get a bad reputation among the agents, it's harder and harder to get acts to come in. 100%, Dan. And why don't we do this? It's 10 o'clock here in downtown Alton. We're going to have to take a brief break because I do have to pay bills. And then we'll come back and we'll continue this conversation right here on this first day of March. Leap year just has to go. I <laughs> thought it was March yesterday. Right here on Riverbender.com. Welcome to Evergreen Place, a community that embodies joyful living, independence, and financial freedom for seniors. If you're looking for a full day of activities or to relax in your apartment, we have you covered. Located on the Alton Memorial Campus. To know us is to love us. Experience the difference at Evergreen Place. Is it time to buy, sell, or even time to consider a short sale of your property? Meet Lisa Webb, owner of Third Street Realty. This local, women-owned, family-operated realty group has over a decade of experience in foreclosures, first-time home buying, and so much more. Third Street Realty prides themselves on holding your hand through the entire process. Let their expertise guide you to your dream home. Visit thirdstrealty.com and start your journey with Lisa Webb today. Do you need to declutter your space? Time to call me, the queen of junk. Since 1993, we have grown to be the leader in residential, commercial, and property management junk removal. At Sparks Junk Removal, we are eco-friendly. We recycle, donate, or repurpose items back into our community. Trash is our last resort to the landfill. Plus, with our all-inclusive service, our crews handle everything from labor to lifting and landfill fees. Give us a call or visit our website, sparksjunkremoval.net, to reclaim your space today. With over 20 years of experience, Wilson's Tree Service has the expertise to handle all of your tree care needs. Licensed and fully insured, their team of experts are dedicated to providing reliable service. Plus, with a 24-hour emergency service line, Wilson's will always be there for you. Don't risk tackling that timber by yourself. Trust the local professionals at Wilson's Tree Service. Visit treeservicealtonil.org to get started today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. Baby, 
coming down the pipeline because I'm looking at your sheet. There's a lot of dates that are on there, uh, whether they're community related, they're, they're amphitheater events, correct? Well, uh, there's people that want to do events. We have things that are on the calendar. We have to go through them, things that aren't approved yet. Uh, just from our perspective, from our season, our anchor events are on the calendar. They're ready to go. The fireworks on the Mississippi on July 3rd, the Food Truck Festival will be back on August 24th. The Jazz and Wine Festival on August 31st. And the Expo is is on the calendar for September 5th through the 8th. And then add on whatever role we play in the powerboat race, which is going to just be a huge event. And for people asking right now, well, what about music coming down the pipeline? We're, we're working through. We, we've got some talent options out there. We're looking at, at numbers. And the big thing is how much sponsor dollars are we going to have and how big can we go? Can we do one show? Can we do two shows? Could we do potentially three shows? It all just comes down to the money. And that's why I wanted to hit on that earlier, because, you know, the public, I don't th- and, and I don't, you know, martyr me for this, but the public, I don't think, realizes that aspect of it. Because, you know, I see all the comments, whether it's on our side of things or on other medias. And the bottom line is they go, well, we could have had such and such here. Yeah, for about eight hundred thousand dollars. Well, it. it- Every, every artist costs a certain amount of money. They have a baseline that they want an offer on. And if they're not routing through and you're just going and getting them, it tends to be more expensive. And then you have artists that are already contracted to places or through organizations like Live Nation, where they're only playing Live Nation venues. So you, you're, you're up against that as well. And that's a actually a really great point. I didn't even think about the Live Nation component of that. And then is there a, a compete clause too with some of the venues that are in the Missouri side? Not necessarily. Okay. You, usually the, the only so-called compete clause would be when you sign a contract, they can't play within 100 miles or a certain radius within so many months. That's what I was uh, wanting to know that, about. That's standard pretty much with any venue. And at this point in time, is this just a, for the public, you know, let's wait and see. Let's We got to see what comes in first before we make decisions. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping we can make decisions and, and announce something sooner rather than later. We're... we're Staying on the case of the sponsors, what what level are you coming in? Give us a baseline so that when we run our numbers, we can we can do a budget and we can say, okay, we can afford to do X, Y, and Z. A couple of months ago, too, Dan, the city of Alton put out uh, in a suggestion form, basically that that lets the citizens of Alton Rivers on the site. Uh, let you know who they would like to see there. Have you seen any of those results yet? Some, they're still compiling everything for the entire commission, and we'll review it, and we'll, that, that'll definitely play into the, the decision-making process, whether whether we can pull something off. <laughs> right. Always entirely depends on on funds, and I've always said I really don't care what it is as long as it will bring people to town because you have these larger events, say like a Nelly a few years ago or a Kenny Rogers, any of the larger events like that, you bring the people to town, they go out to our bars, they go to our restaurants, they stay in hotels, they're generating sales tax that's going back into the coffers of the city. Any any of that would be the city's benefit and our business's benefit because they have customers coming into their places. So those larger events, you'd be surprised how many things they touch with that many people coming to town. I could only imagine. And I mean, just the sights and sounds of that. You know, I was out of town for Nelly, unfortunately, and then the Steve Miller band when you guys had to adapt on the fly and move everything up to Alton Square Mall. But you know, seeing the sights and sounds of that night, because I was over across the pond, but still saw the photos and seeing mm-hmm. Broadway and seeing Third Street just full of people. That's any it should be any goal of any resident or any elected official in the area, in my opinion, is to have that type of foot traffic because of the things that you're doing to bring the folks in. Well, And that's the goal. And the, and the sponsors, when they're going to write you a very large check, whether it be 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, they want to see bigger, bigger acts. And th- that's been going forward since I've been involved back in since 2014 if they're going to write a check that big they want to see bigger acts they and the the whole idea was always we're not little old Alton we can do big things yep a hundred percent if you don't mind me asking do the sponsors ever have really any say on the lineup of the shows 
they're always more than welcome to put in in their input. We take that into account because they're investing in us. So we <laughs> right. want to hear what they're what what they're thinking because we want them to continue to invest over and over. So we we certainly want them to be happy. And getting back to the lineup of just the anchor events, I asked you this last year, but I can't remember off the top of my head what the reasoning is. Uh, July 3rd is the official start of amphitheater season with the fireworks. Was there ever a thought of maybe doing something before that date? We we have in past years, and it's been a while. We we had tried doing things in June. We tried for a few years a bikes and barbecue event that just never took off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we've also run into a few years where you have that spring flooding where June, you're always kind of playing. And knock on wood, we haven't had a bad one for right. quite a while. But there is always that to take into account when you're looking to invest. I mean, the Steve Miller concert was a, a huge investment, the largest we've ever made for a, a music act. And having the amphitheater flooded, we either had to move that and take on extra costs or we were going to be out the money for how the business works. So those are risks you take with an outdoor venue. And, you know, on top of that all, and that's why I think what you guys had do with the commission is so invaluable because, you know, you have Aventive and you have all these partners and you have great things that make up a, a wonderful team. But without the commission, you don't have that core set of values that were established on why the commission's there in the first place. And, you know, as you guys meet, how uh, how important is it for the public to realize that the commission is really looking out for the best interest of all? Because, I mean, you leave your meetings open. Everything's out there for public record. And if anyone's interested, can they stop by and ab- be a part ab- of it? Absolutely. The, the regular meetings are the, the third uh, Monday of each month at 430 at City Hall. And was, uh, was Steve Miller the Bobby Barnhart victory? Was that the 2019 flood? That was the 2019 flood. That's when we were flooded down all over downtown. What City Hall, what the city of Alton did that year was just incredible. I mean, that was just wonderful work. And, and, and even fighting a flood, the, the, in, the, in, I mean, that was hard to believe it was going on five years right. ago. But the, the, our public works and parks departments were fighting, fighting that flood, and they still found a way to help us move that show to the mall parking lot. I didn't realize that. That's incredible. And when you looked at anchor events, is there ever a thought of what stays and what goes? Well, right now we've got the four major ones. We, we've looked at, like I said, at one time we did the, the bikes and barbecue right. event. We, we tried different, different setups for that. It just never took off and never made real financial sense overall but then you take the jazz and wine festival we played with that a few times we finally hit on something because that one was getting into a position to do we keep it or do we invest in something else and whatever we hit on the last couple of years has really started to take off i'm telling you that's my favorite event it was at first i always like going for fireworks because i'm a nostalgia guy and i love seeing that and just reflecting for a couple of minutes expo's fun but there's something special about jazz and wine because you guys hit on something that nobody in the regions hit on and that's how to make a nightclub in an amphitheater mm-hmm. And, and, and a lot of that goes back to the team at Eventive for brainstorming and their expertise in putting on events came up with that idea. And we've slowly grown and hopefully this year will continue to grow. And with that being said, we've been talking for almost 20 minutes now. We only hit on the anchor events because right now we aren't really for sure of what's going to happen because it depends on the support that is received from, you know, sponsors and all that fun stuff. Is there uh, with the F1 powerboat races, when should we, the public have kind of the best gauge on uh, on what the commission's role is on some of the ins and outs of that event as a whole? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Well, a little I, bit I, on I think we'll find out a little more uh, over the next week or two. Uh, but a lot of that will be coming from or information about that will be coming from directly from City Hall and from Rivers and Routes, because that's that's the overarching umbrella. We're just going to be a small piece of it and we'll take on whatever needs to be done to make it successful. We're, we're ready, willing and able, but it's still a matter of working out those details. And. On top of that, with that being said, did I forget about anything that we were supposed to talk about today? I, I will mention Earth Tones Festival. Oh, will yeah, be, sorry. I, that's uh, Alton Main Street's Earth Tones Festival will be back on the riverfront on September 21st. They they seem to have done very well the last couple of years. We're glad they're back on the riverfront. We hope they do well again this year. That's because that's kind of become an anchor, even though it's not our event. It's become an anchor event for the city on the riverfront. Is it a good partnership with Main Street we, and, and all we, of that? We, we, everything's been smooth since they've come back to the riverfront. I, I can't speak highly enough, and every 
everybody that's the last two years of it, I've been out of town and I didn't get to go down there, but everybody that I've talked to that's been to it says it's been an absolutely great event. So I, I hope they continue to grow as well. And I'll speak for that because that's a, a tradition of my parents and I, we always go down for at least an hour and go check it out and it, it keeps growing. And I think, I, I hate to say that, not hate to say, it, but I love to say this. I think the venue plays a big part in that. I, I, you couldn't ask for a better venue, especially for an event like that, an all day festival yeah. style uh, event. But another event that's going to be back this year is the Bud Summers Tribute Concert. Oh, in October. yeah. And that's that's was was started up through uh, Upper Alton. Mm-hmm. Uh, the organizers have stayed together. They are bringing it back again this year. And it's it's a very nice uh event to kind of cap off the season in October because you're starting to get into where weather can play a factor and knock on wood for the Bud Summers tribute the last few that years. That was nice. It has been great weather for an October afternoon. That's because I think somebody's watching down to make sure it's going pretty well. And with that, uh, Dan, I think the Bud Summers, it's such a great way to end it, but also uh, really it shows too the, the diversity of, of events that you really have at the amphitheater. I mean, we just talked from power and, and not saying that you're the, the host of all of the events but you know to have powerboat racing to fireworks to food trucks to wine to music to i mean to tributes it really shows the diversification of our riverfront which i think is our most valuable resource in the area no question about it i mean that that's a catalyst for bringing people to town and we we enjoy playing a small part in hopefully making the city a place people want to come to not only for our residents but let's bring more people here and show them what we have to offer and on, with that being said, Dan, I do have to let you go because we got to keep moving today. But for more information, when can folks start expecting to see maybe some announcements on some shows? Is it going to be a few months? I I don't think it'll be months. Okay. I, I think uh, I'm always pushing. Let's do what. <laughs> let's do it yesterday. Uh, and, and as fast as we can push anything out, we will. I will. I do want to say and welcome. We do have a new member of the commission. Oh, do we? Uh, Hope Mater was appointed by the mayor. We have a full complement of seven now. We welcome her. She sat through her first meeting. It's great to have her on board and a new perspective. And we also have a new vice chair since uh, Michelle Brooks stepped down a few months ago. Uh, the commission has now uh, chosen Rob Honky to be the great vice choice. chair. Great choice. I really appreciate all that Rob does at the marina and glad to see him carrying uh, the reins from Karen and then working with you guys. And then welcome aboard, Hope. Glad to have you on the commission. We'll take a quick break here. I'm glad we got this update in because there's always a lot of information that comes out in the winter months, and it's hard to figure out when to talk well, there's, about it. There, there's a lot of work going on that people don't see to prepare for the the, se- the upcoming season. It starts as soon as the – well, it starts during the, the – previous season well and that's why i really appreciate your time because you're working a career job and then you find time it, no matter what to come on and talk to us and keep us informed and we really um, appreciate that. next next week alone i have three meetings related to the amphitheater after my day job so it's it's going to be a busy couple of weeks i'll for give us. you a couple of these energy drinks to get you through it we'll take a quick pause here and more of our daily show will come right back around the corner right after this on riverbender.com since 1993 sparks junk removal is always adapting to the needs of our clients That is why we now offer weekly trash pickup for selected areas. Plus, we offer driveway safe rubber tire dumpster rental. Give us a call today at 618-781-1407 or visit us at sparksjunkremoval.net. Macias Insurance Agency, providing quality products with extremely competitive prices. As an independent provider, we source multiple companies to offer the best rates possible. Covering auto, home, business, and life insurance, our goal is to provide quality service that meets and exceeds customer expectations. You can rest easy knowing the Macias team is working around the clock to ensure that both you and the most important parts of your life are covered. Our qualified professionals make the insurance process easy so you can live carefree and focus on what matters most. Visit MacíasInsuranceAgency.com today to find out what our team can do for you. Not sure if you've noticed, but those advertised prices from the other dealers are just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. At Roberts Motors, the advertised price is the price you pay. And that, my friend, is great news for you. Don't fall for their so-called incentives that will leave you banging your head against the wall. Go with Roberts Motors. Prices you can trust and people you will like. That's the Roberts Motors way. And trust me, it's the way to go. Has free checking become a thing of the past? Not if Liberty has anything to say about it. With three free personal checking options and even a free business checking account, free is alive and well at Liberty Bank, the local bank that gives you free checking choices and more cashing in your pocket. Bank locally, bank Liberty. For more information, visit www.bankliberty.com.
Riverbender Radio has built three great new stations just for you in the Riverbend. The Eagle, the Riverbend's classic rock station. The Bridge, hit music for the Riverbend. And the River, today's country and all your favorites. Check them out today at riverbenderradio.com. Welcome back to our daily show. Here's CJ. You know that only the good die young. Welcome back. 1029, a little bit of change on this first day of March. We are awaiting our conversation with uh, Mark Miller, who is the owner of Miller Furniture, one of the great uh, stores in our region. We're going to talk. They just received some wonderful recognition. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and the 96-year journey that Miller Furniture has had. That's going to come our way in just a few short seconds. But while I have you, let me fill you in on Sparks Junk Removal. You know, Denise Sparks, I can't say enough great things. I talk about her all the time. But Sparks Junk Removal did something that is so difficult, and I hope you guys realize how beneficial her work is. You know, everyone was angry. There's a lot of unhappy people about you know, a trash company in town that happened to be a conglomerate. Denise Sparks decided she heard enough of the feedback. <clears throat> someone else needed to be involved and someone else needed to be an alternative option. And that's exactly what she did. You know, Denise jumped in with her feet on the ground, both feet wet, and she for a year busted her butt to make sure that she could provide this service. And now you look those purple and yellow trash cans are literally popping all over the 618, and it's because of her commitment to her clients. You know, customer service is something that's going away, and now you see Macy's is wanting to close some stores because they want to make sure that, you know, they update and upgrade their customer experience. Well, you... Denise Sparks never had to do that. She just kept doing the same thing she's done for 30 years. Whenever she picked up your junk or whatever, she dropped off one of those rubber tire dumpsters. You know, she does all of this because of her love for the community and plus her love for her clients. When you call Denise Sparks, you get Denise Sparks and Sparks Junk Removal and Hauling. You don't get a call center. So be a part of it, whether or not it's for the weekly trash service if you're in those selected areas or if you want to utilize her other staple and anchor services that has kept her going for 30 years. That's available at sparksjunkremoval.net. That's sparksjunkremoval.net. And now joining us on the Zoom, I'm excited for this one, Mark Miller. Miller Furniture joins us pitcher and pitcher in Zoom. Let's go there now. Good morning, Mark. How are we? Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Well, before we uh, go into our conversation, I got to break the ice. Every Thursday for a couple of years, all I heard about was Miller Furniture. I was over on the dial in St. Louis, and Lynn Vinhouse and Ray Hartman would do Miller Furniture Presents. We're going to the movies. And, man, just such a great segment. I always just heard nothing but great things about what you guys do each and every day. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Lynn and, uh, and Ray have known them a long time. Lynn is a family friend, and you know, that's our uh, part of our contribution to the arts is, you know, sponsoring, uh, you know, Lynn. And, and I mean, she's she has a passion for film, yeah. you know, like and, and uh, just like we have a passion for furniture and solving customers problems. I mean, I, lo I love being around people that have a passion for what they do. And, you know, I, I it's just something that we. Uh, strive for. Well, and for 96 years, you guys have strived for really great things and keep growing each and every year. And I got to ask, let's start off with the big one. 2024 Retailer of the Year. Congratulations on that acknowledgement. Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is years, you know, years in the making. I mean, every year, I feel like from about 2007, I came back, I was, a, I gave my best shot to be a professional baseball player and, and, didn't make it there. I mean, I played in the Frontier League and in college, came back from Australia from winter ball. And I really just said to myself, OK, this is it. It's time to really go all in with my dad uh, in the furniture business. And I mean, every year we did something. We had a project. We just took little steps, a little bit at a time. And it took 10 years from that kind of commitment point to expand to our second store in Lake St. Louis. And, and that is, that move right there really um help this jump off for to everything else we've achieved. Well, and with being such a, a family operated business, I mean, we're talking, you know, four generations now. I come from a family business myself and I know how much that legacy can mean. 
And for you each and every day, how important is it to, you know, remember all the past contributions and utilize uh, those to keep propelling forward? All the time. I, I remember in the Great Recession in 2008 to, you know, 2010, just thinking about my great grandfather, John, and how did he make it through the Great Depression? I mean, he started and we started in 1927. Right. Things were booming. Uh, and then all of a sudden you got the depression and we're selling high end furniture. I mean, it's not exactly a need. It's a want. And so, it, you know, how did he do it? Well, he stayed close to his customers. It was all about, you know, don't worry. It's more important to have customers than to worry about, you know, your margins or, you know, it's, it's important. You need to build loyal customers and do the things you need to do to build loyal customers, like have amazing products huge and different products. I mean, like this live edge table that's sitting right yeah, here. Yeah, that's I mean, beautiful. Is, I was actually going to ask you about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's solid walnut uh, with a live edge built by Albert Barkman in Ohio. I mean, Barkman Furniture builds a lot for us. And so we've got a ton of these smaller Amish workshops uh, that build incredible heirloom quality furniture, but it's very reasonable. I mean, these these are not publicly traded companies here. These, these guys do not have lavish lifestyles. Their prices to me are amazing. And so then that just gets, you know, passed down to the customer. Well, and too, in a world where, you know, everyone is kind of, and I hate to, you know, kind of throw us all under the bus here, but it seems like, you know, consumers aren't really doing, for my instance anyway, that due diligence of really why should you have that piece of quality furniture? Because, you know, you can order all you want off of the big box stores online, but when you get that, good luck if it lasts you two years a lot of the times, you know? Well, exactly. And then let's think about the environmental impact. Of yeah. That. In the same amount of time that this table and eight chairs are going to be, you know, in my home and then in my kids' homes, if you were to purchase over and over and over again uh, imported product made of particle board and veneered wood, you're going to throw away six or seven tables and 45 chairs into a landfill. You're right. You're a hundred percent right, and, and that's why I think it's so important to really talk about the the craftsmanship that really goes into the products that you guys have. And I mean, this big uh, location that you have in Fairview Heights, fifty five thousand square feet. That's impressive. How did this storefront? Uh, how did this location come about? Was this something you guys wanted to do for quite some time? So we needed to have a central distribution center. I mean, we, we opened in Lake St. Louis, we opened in Ellisville, and we opened in Ellisville January 21, the, the, the height of the, of the furniture pandemic sales boom. So the furniture business boomed like never before and probably never sent, you know, and, and never will again, because people couldn't spend money really on anything else. So we had, and also inventory was at a premium, and we had the inventory because we were buying months ahead of time. And we just ran out of space in our warehouses. And so we needed one big warehouse so we could just be better organized and offer better service to all three locations. And so we were on the hunt and we were looking at several places in Belleville. It was quite a journey. I mean, wow, trying to trying to find a building large enough right. to house our inventory and have a little bit of a retail showroom front proved itself very challenging. And the characters that own these properties, I mean, some of them don't care. They own they own 1,500 buildings. They don't care if a 100,000 square foot building is sitting vacant. Like, they won't sell it to you. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely nuts. I mean, there was Stan Kroenke uh, was, was somebody involved. Uh, there was some guy that's in Texas. He's, he's tied in with the attorney general down there that's under indictment. I think he's under indictment. There was, I mean, all kinds of local politics. I mean, oh, it was quite the uh, journey to get a building. And then when weekends only, um, you know, um, decided to close, then that building became available. And the second that be, I had made an offer, I think the first day it was on the market because we, we were really into the market and finding a property like that was really unique. And uh, it was just great. And, and working with Tom Phillips and, um, and the, you know, he had a great business there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, incredibly well organized. The warehouse was already set up. So now, I mean, all we're able to service all of our locations, Belleville, Lake St. Louis, Ellisville, and now Fairview, so much better because we're all under one roof. Our service team is there and we just have an amazing selection of inventory. So it's providing quality at scale. That's, that's really what I've been driving for 
for the last couple of years is just to improve and get back to that that same super high level of quality we delivered when it was just me, my dad, and 10 other people in Belleville. Right. Well, and that's actually, I don't know if you have a crystal ball over there, but I just, that's exactly what I thought of is, wow, what a be- what better formula than this for streamlining and keeping the mission and your guys' values the same through it? Because it seems like when companies try that, there's always a little bit of a give and take when you find that location, you find that spot. And it seems like for this, it was a perfect situation, a perfect storm for you guys. Yeah, I, I would say so. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, and, and 55,000 square feet. Yeah. I mean, in comparison, our stores in Missouri, uh, Lake St. Louis is 10,000. Ellisville is 12,000. And uh, the Belleville showroom is 26,000 square feet. Now, 10 of 10,000 is in the basement. So 16 upstairs. And it's amazing when people come into that Belleville store. I swear the first time customer comes in, they always say this. They go, I had no idea this place was so big because it's all, it's an old hundred year old building. There's lots of rooms, but 55,000 square feet all in one level. We now have room for an outdoor furniture gallery. We have the largest mattress gallery in St. Louis in the store. And I believe that it is, it, if it's not the largest selection of Amish furniture in the Midwest, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. I mean, it's right. uh it's um, incredible uh, the vendor partners we have and how much you can see for immediate delivery. And of course we do custom orders too. Well, and, and before we go uh, continue, you know, there's so many times I've talked to folks where what I think so great about what you guys do is you make people proud of their furniture again. And that sounds kind of corny for me to say that, but there used to be a time where, you know, people love to bring invite folks in and show them their couch, show them the, their new setup and say, this is a such and such and really take a look. And now every time I talk to someone with a Miller furniture piece. That's the first conversation is, yeah, I got this from Miller and it came from, it came from this, uh, you know, Amish distributor. I mean, it's just wonderful to see that love for their furniture again. Yeah. It's not a commodity. You know what I mean? It really is. It's, it's somebody's piece of art, really. I mean, these are handcrafted, uh, you know, pieces of furniture. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, you, you can be because you put your money, um, where, you know, like where your values are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for the, for the folks that, you know, um, you know, when you buy American made, you're not just supporting Miller furniture and all the, you know, the things we do within the community, but you're also supporting our suppliers that are also family owned businesses in the United States and sawmills in the United States and, you know, trucking companies, it just, it all goes down um, you know, and it's supporting domestic manufacturing and okay, that's great. You pat yourself on the back. I support American, but from a product standpoint, it's superior. Yep. It's solid wood. You can change the size. You can change the finish. You can put different chairs with it. You know, so the product itself is definitely superior in my opinion. And I've been doing this 20 years and I thoroughly, thoroughly research all of the furniture available to us at all of the furniture markets. And it just doesn't compare. And it's going back to something you said a little bit earlier about getting inventory you were mu- you you ordered for months ahead of time. Do you guys take into account style changes or maybe new trends whenever you're looking at you know ordering ahead of time? Because I'm sure that could be a little bit tedious too. Of you know, is there something else that's currently trending? What's looking good for our area? Does that go into play? Of course, absolutely. You know, we're we're in the style business as well. And, um, but you know, you, our customers, um, are typically going to be going for more of the classics, Uh you know? So like we want to be, we want to be too, we want to be on trend, but not too trendy, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. A lot of it is like, is contemporary color palettes, but with like classic design. Right. Well, and, and every now and then it's fun to have like the trendiest piece uh, of, of furniture around, especially in like reclining furniture. They're coming up with new comfort, you know, things that they're offering in a sofa. I mean, we've got one from Flex Steel that has so people wouldn't like the cup holders because they didn't like to look at it. Well, this one has hidden cup holders, so you can't see it until you need to use it. It has a wireless charging station. It has a drop down <laughs> console like 
it has all of these really cool things and not to mention that it's very comfortable and has power lumbar support and stuff like that. But they're always coming out with, um, you know, innovative uh, products. I could do that show from that chair. I think that's easily obtainable. You know, I uh, will have to get the boss to bring one down here and that way I can, I can utilize that. That seems like a better way to sit at the microphone, uh, Mark. And we- you know what? We might be able to take care of something like that for you. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, and getting back to this uh, uh, this recognition, because, you know, there's some, uh, you know, nuances to this and acknowledges, you know, the furniture industry's, industry's highest achievers. And take me through what that really means for you guys in that selection process. How Who do we have here on screen? Yeah, that's us. This, so this is our fifth generation, Alexander Miller. Alexander, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, he's doing good. Yeah, that's us, buddy. But uh, no, thanks. Yeah, he came came to join us. That's he knows his future too. You know that hickory is stronger than maple and cherry, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, and that's what I, I mean. Talk. That's why I love what you guys do because it's truly a family business, and that's what I love. I love those values. And Alexander, you're doing a good job of keeping your dad in line over there, bud. he's happy but yeah i mean i i worked with uh, my dad for the first you know 18 or so years of my furniture career and which was amazing and be able to learn from him and and the people that you know the sales reps that he had done business with for years and learning the business from them and you know it really is a is a family and, and my wife now has been full time with us for well, we've been married for uh, for 10 years. And so she started like hearing about the business and, and then full time with us for the last six years. And she runs the store in Lake St. Louis and is always, you know, she's her and I are like co-visionaries. So she's really helped drive this um, expansion and, you know, help give me the confidence to uh, make the right choices. Cause she's good at making, she's, she makes good decisions. She's smart. And so I, I pay attention and, and listen to, to her a lot. That's always a smart play. That is a very smart play, Mark. <laughs> well, well, and she's really, she's great at picking fabrics. So yeah. one of the most important things in furniture is like picking the fabric to the frame, getting the right fabric or leather on the right couch and the right accent pillows and the, and the rug and coordinate it all. And so she's got a really good eye for that. And, um, you well, know, that's a really cool component of it, too. Just following up on that. I mean, to have different strengths already in the family. I mean, that's a really good that's really cool to see how the strengths kind of play out and in, in Miller's growth chart overall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and our team as well. I mean, there's you know, we've got seven departments and um and every one of them is headed by people that are committed and, you know, we have our core values and, and, uh, our, our, you know, we, we, we really rally behind our core values and mission statements. And it's something that drives us for excellence. And when you get an award like retailer of the year, something like that just helps up your level of commitment. You know, people have said, you know, the, there are people in the furniture business that have said, you're the best. Right. And, and so anytime you're you're maybe not quite feeling feeling like, boy, you know, I'm at work today, but maybe I'm not all the way there. It's like, all right, you know, we've got a commitment. We've got some, something to be proud of. We've got a reputation. Let's you know, let's go. Let's do this. What do we need to do? You know, like what's the next what's the next right thing to do? And, and you just you know, take steps forward every day. One step at a time. And and that seems like it's been the best formula for, for all of you at Miller Furniture. And Mark, before I let you go, we've already been talking for almost 20 minutes. I always keep people a little too longer than I tell them uh, at, at first. But Mark, is there any sp- uh, sales going on this spring that our audience down here in the Madison County area would be interested in stopping up to Belleville, Lake St. Louis, or Ellisville? Yeah, or, and now we're even closer in Fairview, Fairview Heights. Fairview Heights, you know? yeah, sorry. <laughs> sure jump down the road. Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually called our Retailer of the Year sale. And every March, we have a Flex Steel factory authorized sale. And so not only um, in-stock items, but custom orders as well. And we still, we even have uh, three different recliners that we're doing two-for-one deals on. So we've got a Flex Steel mini recliner, two for eleven ninety nine. dollars Wow. Which is crazy. We've got this really cool leather wing back called the Oswald. It's uh, two for fourteen ninety nine. Uh, I mean, it's just there's some really incredible deals out there, and uh, a big kind of a big man's leather recliner called the Kingsley 
two for twenty nine ninety nine. But besides that, I mean, yeah, we have incredible deals going on with our uh, Amish vendors. So March is a big market for us. So we we go to Ohio, we go to Indiana, and at those markets we get to place orders at discounts. So if you come into Miller Furniture during the sale and place an order, whether it's in stock or custom orders, we can take that into the market and save more and you save more. A hundred percent. And Mark, I always appreciate, uh, you know, chat and Miller furniture because I think what you guys do is just fantastic. And you're welcome back anytime, sir, to fill us in on more growth and more excitement. And if you're ever in the Alton area, stop by and see me. I'd love to chat, man. No, I would love to. Thanks so much for having me on. And I love the website. You know, I get the emails and I, you know, I read it's, it's great. It's, it's local news and, and there's, it's hard to find good local news, but I, I really like Riverbender. Thank you, man. That means a lot to all of us here. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, hopefully Alexander keeps you in line today. Oh, absolutely. You <laughs> will. Awesome. At, at 1049, we'll take a quick pause here on Riverbender.com. Our first day of March continues right after this in the heart of the 618. When I got in the car accident at the ER, they gave me a prescription of hydrocodone. And over time, it took more medication to mask the pain. I moved over to drug seeking and found heroin and fentanyl. I went to the Centerstone rehab facility was the best decision I ever made in my life. I have my own car. I have a job. There's nothing holding me back anymore. Dream Home Realty Center. Hey, Sherry, talk to me, Dream Team. Without showing. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a weekend warrior, gear up with Foul Commit and elevate your hunting experience. From rugged gear for the seasoned hunter to adorable outfits for the little ones, we've got your whole family covered. Literally, because the best moments are made in the great outdoors. And with Foul Commit, you're not just wearing gear, you're wearing the stories of your adventures. Discover the joy of hunting together. Visit foulcommit.com and outfit your family for the next generations of memories. We are Phillips 66 Wood River Refinery. We make the fuels that take us to work and our children to school. We make materials and energy products that allow us to stay connected to each other. We care about the quality and safety of our products because we care about the communities we share. Our employees live our values of safety, honor, and a commitment to act as good neighbors where we live and operate. We are Phillips 66. When life throws unexpected challenges your way, you need a versatile legal ally to protect you. Sean Lentz, with over 12 years of experience, is here to help you in a variety of avenues. From personal injury to criminal defense and even semi-truck accidents, Sean Lentz has your back. Don't wait for the justice that you deserve. Call 618-465-8000 and see how Sean can help you today. You're listening to Our Daily Show with CJ Nacello on Riverbender.com. the first day of March with some all-stars. We love them. We love stupid people. Makes us feel better about ourselves. Hey, let's take you to Philadelphia first. The city of brotherly love and the city of the worst fans in sports. Getting rid of $1 hot dog night. Well, because 25 cent beer night and the disco demolition worked so well, time would tell. Hey, for more than a quarter of a century, Phillies fans considered Dollar Hot Dog Night among the best prom ballpark promotions. But now, the team has decided it was the worst. 
you know, brought work. Okay, I'll keep moving. Those dog days of April when Philly weather is cold and <laughs> wieners are a steal are going, going, get up, baby, and gone. The Phillies officially ended up ended the popular promotion Thursday and replaced Dollar Dogs on select dates with a two-for-one deal at two April games at Citizens Bank Park. A statement from the team. A, the team had to issue a statement on Dollar Hot Dogs. Based on the organization's ongoing commitment to provide a positive experience for all fans in attendance, you're telling me that Philadelphia Philly fans don't know how to behave when they boot Santa Claus through batteries at them, then boot a little kid for singing the national anthem? Oh, they're great people. Goodness. What wasn't positive about Dollar Dog Nights? Well, armed with projectile frankfurters, some unruly Philly fans began chucking their I am not <laughs> chucking their favorite meat during a game last year, and those wieners soared like cans of corn throughout the stands and onto the field. The demand for discount dogs also led for clogged lines, if not arteries, on the concourse. <laughs> and the cramped spaces led to safety and security concerns. Who needs snowballs? An April 11th game last season into a Philly turned into a Philly food fight when fans largely good-naturedly good-naturedly tossed their ballpark franks in several sections leading to multiple ejections. It wasn't just the throwing John Weber, senior vice president and an individual who's still recovering from last year. It's the concourse, the crowds of everybody being at the same X amount of stands. But obviously, you know, the throwing was the bit of a tipping point. <laughs> to be frank, <laughs> the Phillies don't necessarily need to slash prices these days to pack in the crowds. The Phillies started the promotion 27 years ago, and they still played at car <laughs> at the Veteran Stadium to try to boost ticket sales on a otherwise dreary game night. But the Phillies dog at least <laughs> to the food frenzy deal throughout the decades, even as they rose to begin. Uh, become one of the best teams in the National League. The Phillies topped 3 million fans last year and scheduled three hot dog nights for a dollar for two April games one and one May week night game with attendances generally down compared to weekend games. But the Phillies' BOGO nights this season are April 2nd against the Reds. That should be an easy one. And April 16th against the Rockies. Now, Amark... Uh, Aramark did not provide sales totals for the year. The company said ahead of 2022 World Series when the Phillies played the Houston Astros that one of every three fans ate a hot dog at Citizens Bank Park and an average of 6,900 hot dogs were sold per game. That's enough to line Ashburn Alley five times. That's just incredible. But anyway, Phillies fans, once again, you ruined it for yourself. You're an all-star. Let's see. Nearly 200 goats brought to a Texas park to clear unwanted plants escaped from their fence and were wandering through nearby neighbors neighborhoods in Arlington. The police department said the goats were bad. I mean, were employed by the <laughs> to the city to clear plants such as poison ivy, poison oak from the Crystal Cannon natural area, but they somehow managed to get out of their fenced enclosure. Those goats are always problems. You know, I always wanted one of those fainting goats, but then I realized those suckers can jump like seven feet. Yeah, no, why would you want one? Police said multiple calls came in, and I get it. People are going to go, well, I have a lot of goats, and they're one. It's okay. It's just my opinion. Came from local residents reporting a large number of goats wandering through the yard. I can't promise plants were not eaten that weren't supposed to be eaten, but no goats were injured. That said, uh, Michael Debreck, the city's assistant director of Park and Rec. But congratulations over there to your wandering goat, I guess, client what do you call that, po uh, invasive species control, I, I guess. Hey, you know, the owner of an electronic roadside in Washington said a message warning drivers about angry raccoons ahead was actually the work of pranksters. What a lame prank. The, side, the sign at the side of Spokane Northwest Boulevard near Audubon Park displayed the perplexing message during the Wednesday morning commute, and city public works department officials said they had no information on the sign or of any angry raccoons in the area. Mike Beggs, 
I beg to differ. Co-owner of Spokane Traffic Control, which was contracted by Public Works to provide the sign for a construction project, said the sign was hacked by unknown pranksters. Begs the question to be asked, said some <laughs> said someone twisted the lock on the back of the sign open and was able to access the controls to change the display message. This is the first time that's happened that I can remember, Beggs told the spoke spokesman review. Somebody had to know what they were doing. Beggs said that he was relieved the message was something inoffensively, inoffensively humorous. We are fortunate that it was not rated R. <laughs> I beg to differ. All right, one final one for you. An Oklahoma grandmother is celebrating her 25th birthday. How wonderful is that? A grandmother, a grandmother celebrating her 25th birthday. Well, you know. Mary Forsyth was recognized by the centurions of Oklahoma and the city of Sand Springs issuing a proclamation marking her, well, 100th birthday, but... She was actually born on leap year, so she's celebrating 25 years this year, and I agree. She's 25. I'm sorry. Just because you were born on leap year or leap day doesn't, you know, we can't change the rules. It's just the way they are. 25 never looked so good. Foresight said that non leap years were an excuse to have birthday parties on multiple days. I always thought I was blessed, he told ABC News. It was so much fun. We celebrated whenever we wanted to. Foresight, a mother of two, grandmother of five, and a great grandmother of 11. Oh boy, my boy is celebrating her 25th birthday Thursday <laughs> with a big. Big party at a local church. <laughs> no gifts, please. I don't want anything to store. That's how we're going to wrap this up today. Congratulations. 100 is truly the two, the new 25. I will see you back here next week, Monday, for more of our daily show. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a fantastic show this weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. On that note, stay safe. Call an Uber. Most importantly, try your best to stay out of jail. Stay out of jail.